Hi everyone. Before starting, I would like to thank to thank the organizer of this session that so far is rich of interesting papers. Um, I'm um, I'm currently in my first year uh, in the first year of my PhD, and I'm working on quantification of, you know, of pottery production and management of natural resources, especially fuel of Roman terra sigillata. That is a red fine table were massively produced in Central Italy and beyond. What I'm going to present today is uh, an attempt to connect the Terra Sigillata workshops with the landscape where they were located, paying particular attention to the changes of conditions related with its property and use. This presentation is uh, based on literature review and it's just the beginning of uh, 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 further work aiming to reconnect the pieces of the network existing in the past among products, environment, and producers. Uh, here, a summary of what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I will briefly introduce the main characteristics of the human-made environment during Roman times. Uh, then I will move on to Terra Sigillata Italica Pottery and uh, its two main production centers in the, con in the context uh, of uh, the Northern Etruscan spatial, social and economic transformations during the Augustan time. To trace a link between the production and the landscape in view of due human modifications. Um, so talking about the land during Roman time, times, uh, we can generally state that uh, the whole Roman history was uh, um, tied to the land. All productions, uh, both agricultural and artisanal, were dependent on it. Uh, and also the social and political development were influenced and at least partially determined by issues related to exploitation of resources and distribution of properties. I would like to underline that uh, these categories that you see are just a tool, of course, for us to understand and distinguish things. But in reality, everything was fluid and uh, interconnecting. During Roman times, the exploitation of natural resources of all sorts was closely connected with property rights on land. Wealth and income were also based on an agrarian economy. That means that the agri, so the agrarian land unities, were a sort of unit of measure of richness and prestige. And uh, in determining the property of the land and therefore the role of people in the society, the centuriation played an important role by assigning to different people portions of land, heterogeneous for size, resources, and possibilities available. The villa, the villa economy is just the perfect example of this fluidity I was mentioning because this land property was already an assemblage in itself of different land types and economies in a mixture of human-made environments and wilder ones. Uh, in such a context, it is extremely important to study the exploitation, the processing and distribution of, of various natural resources, both agriculture and non-agriculture, as I was saying, not separately, but in their constantly interactions. So now some key concepts about what Terra Sigillata is. Uh, this uh, fine tableware can be defined as the archetypical Roman tableware. Uh, and uh, it presents uh, a red and glossy surface and what pr was produced in several areas of the, West, of the Western Empire and distributed throughout the, the Roman world and beyond. The starting point uh, is uh, the second half of the first century BCE in central Italy, and uh, it gradually grows, uh, both in their area and in others. Uh, the outcome was a high quality mass production, exceptional in terms of standardization and quantity for a pre-industrial economy. The Italian production centers uh, oh, sorry, um, are mainly located in Etruria. And uh, the two main ones are Arezzo and Pisa. And um, from Tuscany, the production expanded to southern Gaul, here, uh, first, at the end of the first century BCE, and then to central Gaul, and in the end, to Germany. 
at the beginning of the first century CE. In this region, the production will last longer than in Italy itself because of the proximity with the military camps and perhaps of, uh, of more favorable environmental conditions. Its uh, distribution is extremely impressive compared with every other ancient product because Terra Sigillata is basically present in every Roman archaeological site and a, stab, a stamped fragmented bowl from Pisa was found even in India, together with uh, other Terra Sigillata from Central Italy, Lyon, and Puteoli. According to Peacock, the success of a workshop depends on these three elements. Uh, all of them, and especially the upper two, so clay and fuel, are strongly related with the environment and the human exploitation activities. As said, a strong relationship with the environment characterizes all the production activities in a pre-industrial economy, but the more sophisticated, complex, and quantitatively big a production is, the more environmentally demanding it can be. In particular, Sigillata required an accurate selection and purification of clay and a long and high temperature firing in oxidizing atmosphere, consuming therefore a huge amount of fuel. Um, now let's focus on um, our geographical context. So by observing northern Etruria will be pretty clear how much the fine pottery production development reflects the economic and social progress uh, derived from the transformations during the Augustan age and especially how much this transformation is connected with the land. At the beginning of the production, Arezzo was the main manufacturing center of Terra Sigillata. The important progresses of the manufacture are significantly related to the changed uh, geopolitical and social conditions in the area, as we can see. So, uh, the prototype phase of uh, red slip wear is concluded around 40 C, 46 BCE, uh, exactly when the Caesarian colonists arrived in the area. In this year, the characteristics of the new production are defined. And at the same time, something is changing in the ownership of the land. Defeated the nobilitas supporting Pompeius, the rival of Caesar, the estates were now available for Caesar and his entourage. And uh, again, the acme of the technological quality of the products was, a, was achieved immediately after the Augustan land division and assignment between 30 and 20 BC. So again, it marks uh, a strong link between what was going on in the, um, in the land assignation, assignments and what was going on in the production itself. Um, one of the key figures of this production is Ateius, a member of the gens Atea, who supplied with his Terra Sigillata the troops of the German cast, in the German castra along the Limes in an almost monopolistic regime from 12 BC to 9 CE and they localized these workshops in Pisa and in southern Gaul. According to historiographical and epigraphical sources, one of the Atei, serving Sulla Centurion, received a vast portion of land in Valdichiana, part of the Arezzo territory. And this property, owned by the veteran Marcus Ateius, constituted therefore the start of the fortune of the family. In the second phase of the production, Pisa was the main center. Here, the production started by the will of the Atei that moved the atelier, and Terra Sigillata workshops were concentrated in the city's northern sub sub suburbium, sorry, and in the territory along the Auser and the Circulus River, so in the north. Uh, it was a river running here, that now it's not in the city anymore. Um, and um, this production landscape is really similar to the one found uh, in Arezzo, constituted by a proximity with the city and the countryside at the same time, and by availability of water and clay. Uh, this position was particularly fortunate. Here there was uh, yes, another workshop uh, at the river mouth, because the coastal line shore was here at that time. Um, so this position was particularly fortunate not only because of the vicinity to the water but also for the presence of a good quality clay in the riverbed of the Auser, uh, optimal for this uh, kind of production and therefore the riblet, therefore chosen on purpose. Uh, whilst most of the other pottery productions along uh, history 
uh, in Pisa used the clay of the Arno Basin, so the other river. Um, in Pisa, Plus Value, of course, is the presence of a uh, fluvial harbor and uh, um, um, easy connection with the sea, important element for the setting of uh, the Ateus franchising. Um, again, uh, some dates from Pisa that can help us in uh, outlining the production as well. Uh, so Pisa was a Civitas Federata uh, since the second half of the third century BC and then a municipium at the end of the social war. Uh, already at that time, uh, um, it had uh, important roads and harbors that were used uh, uh, massively by the Romans. And um, between 41 and 33, the colony was founded. Uh, this means again that the land was centuriated and divided among the colonists. The new organization of the landscape came to constitute a stronger network with the communication infrastructures already existing. Uh, here you can clearly see the centuriation grid. It is kind of well preserved in uh, uh, aerial photography and some uh, uh, landscape survey. And the red dots are the villa recognized in surveys. Um, the production of, um, of Terra Sigillata starts uh, around the 20 BC and um, um, it's uh, immediately a mass production, exporting in Gaul and along the Limes. Um, another gens involved in the production, both in Arezzo and in Pisa, uh, provides us several uh, precious information. It's the gens Racinia uh, that again can help to understand the integration between productions, lands, and ge geopolitical tra transformations. Um, this group of people was the most prolific in terms of duration of the firm because especially uh, one of the members, Racinius Pisanus, was active for at least 60 years. And we know that according, thanks to the stamps. Uh, one member of the gens was the curion of the colony in 4 uh, CE. And uh, others, uh, so, so, he, so he was involved in the land assignment at, at that time. And others were involved in other productions and exploitations, as documented by stamps in Greeks, Ancora, and Lead Ingots. Furthermore, several place names, both in the area of Pisa and Arezzo, uh, are related with the family name Racinius. So even now there are villages and areas uh, called Racignano, Rossignano that are clearly related with uh, uh, this uh, Latin name. Um, Pisa beside the pottery was a vital productive and commercial context in general. According to the ancient sources, good quality cereals and wood, especially timbers for shipbuilding, uh, were produced and exported. Clay and stone were quarried, and uh, plus numerous villas, numerous villa that we saw in the previous map and some harbor sites are archaeologically documented. Uh, so considering the mentioned shipbuilding and harbors, we can suppose that mercatores were present and active in Pisa and that in such a context, rich potters were also involved in the trade organization of, of uh, their products in the first place. Um, almost paradoxically, a sign of uh, an existing integration among uh, agriculture, manufacturers and trade in Pisa is constituted by the end of Terra Sigillata itself, uh, the end of the production, after more than 150 years. Because despite of this uh, huge change in the economy, um, the local economy does not collapse with it, showing that the network was solid and articulated enough to survive and to renovate and transform. So, uh, and um, yeah, just to conclude, uh, I hope that the picture I've just outlined helps to understand the strong interaction existing between big pottery production, land ownership, and especially special organization, aiming at rational use of natural resources and at producing income and wealth. 
Given the above, I think that pottery production should be included in the big container of the all-encompassing Roman land administration regarding fields, forests, waterways and roads, shaping the landscape in several ways, among which the well-known centuriation grid constitute, constitutes only one important but not exhaustive fragment. Behind the imperial power, the big trades and successes that sometimes seem yes to be important but extremely abstract concepts, we found out that there are real and tangible aspects such as land and resources. Thanks.